Good morning, I'm Happy Buddha. Um, I'm doing another healing meditation today. So I think another meditation that's focused on on um, our healthcare workers who are really in the trenches and you know, as I'm, I've watched like a few videos of healthcare workers, doctors, um, uh, talking about the experience of, 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 of being there as people are coming in very sick and dying. Um, and I'm just thinking, gosh, we're having an entire generation of, of doctors that are, are um, going to be traumatized from this experience, truly traumatized. And um, If the world works the way it should, it, it will lead to a big conversation about trauma and how we deal with it. Because I do hope these healthcare workers, when this is all said and done, um, if they do have trauma from this experience, that they will have access to, uh, to, to therapists, to people who can help with trauma, or to healers, as it may be. Um, but I think... There's a lot of people in our, our country who experience trauma on a day-to-day -day basis, people who live in neighborhoods with high gun violence, people who have been traumatized by the police, people who live in prisons, um, people who've been to war. There's a lot of people in our country who experience trauma, who have experienced high levels of trauma and are experiencing it. And right now I'd say our doctors and nurses are experiencing that trauma. Um, being in a situation and day by day it becomes more of a situation where there are life and death decisions made on a moment to moment basis where, you know, there is the fear that, you don't, you know, first of all, they don't have the equipment they need to protect themselves, but there's also the fear that they, um, the fear that they don't have the equipment, the fear that they don't have the equipment to help their patients, the ventilators. Um, and whether or not they've had to make hard decisions or decisions um, have been made for them because of, of the availability of equipment at that time. I know that uh, hospitals are shifting around equipment to, to meet the needs where they are. Um, and that's not always, you, you can't always get to everyone. So, um, So I want to concentrate on those healthcare workers. And for me, I, a lot of times I'll do this when I'm doing healing for the healthcare workers, I'll start close by to me and I'll, I'll go out from there. Um, and you know, it's not just in this country, it's not just in this city that we're having problems. It's not just in this country that we're having problems that these healthcare workers are, are, uh, facing very difficult decisions, but it's, it's people, uh, all over the world and not just facing difficult decisions, you know, exposing themselves and, uh, And the fears they have that they are not going to be able to work to help people. And then what happens then?
Oh, I think next I'd really like to concentrate just on maybe on the, on the disease itself, on this virus that is attacking so many people. And, um, and we know it's infecting a lot more people at a, a lower level, but obviously some, some people are affected at a higher level. And, um, so when I, when I do healing of, around a disease, bacterial, viral, I, I usually, I'll see it sort of shutting down and dying black blackness. Now the thing is when, when diseases die, there's still a, a, um, it's still a weight on our body, right? Our bodies still have to process through the sloughed off disease, the sloughed off virus. Um, and our, our body has to deal with that. Um, so sometimes, a, a, you know, a virus dying all at once, it can, it can, you can have a big reaction to that as well. Um, I think what I'm going to visualize is just essentially this virus. And we all know this, we have a visual of this virus because it's got pictures of it everywhere, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you just sort of see a visual of, of, of the virus essentially turning off of these uh, proteins that grab on to things uh, to sort of be turned inwards or shut off. I see these proteins that stick out just falling away. So as I continue to do the sailing, you know, I want to talk again about faith, the power of faith, which has kind of been my theme running through these videos that I've started to make the last few weeks. Um, you know, my experience in India was, was uh, wonderful and terrible at the same time because as as I was having this great time, things were starting to be locked down in the States. And I, I understood on a certain level, like, I probably shouldn't be doing this or socializing with people. I probably should be staying inside. But I didn't do it at that point. I'm like, oh, we're, we're not doing that in this country. 
um, in India where I was. Now they're doing it more than we are. Um, but looking back at that, I was very much in my faith. I was following my instincts throughout that time. So even though should I have done should I have done more to protect people, to prevent people from possibly getting something that I possibly could have had? Maybe. But on the other hand, I followed my instincts and that's the best that I can do. Uh, and that's the best that any of us can do. You know, every day we're kind of tasked with these life or death decisions as we're sitting here in our homes, trying not to spread this disease. If we go to the grocery store, is that something that would get us sick or other people sick? Um, and not just, you know, some other people. It could be our entire family if we're living with our families. Um, uh, the consequences of small choices feel really large right now. And the truth is, is there aren't right answers to this. Yes, staying inside as much as possible, staying away from people as much as possible is, is the right thing. But, you know, uh, you still need your food. Uh, I mean, I think that we should be having deliveries for everyone for food. It's it's kind of ridiculous. We're still growing in grocery stores. I haven't been because I've been in isolation due to traveling. But, uh, you know, Rahul, who's also in quarantine with us, he's gone out. So, you know, that that could also spread disease if we were infected. Um, now, but we all have to sort of go with our instincts with this. And for me, instincts is faith. Instincts is God. Um, so, you know, if if you're going completely crazy, you have to move your body, you have to get outside, but you live in a city and you know you're going to encounter other people, like, that's still a choice you have to make. And, and it there isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, there is not a right or wrong answer for a lot of these things. For a lot of things, we have to go on faith. And once we've made these decisions... Uh, you can't go back and unmake them. You have to have faith that they were made for the right reason. You know, uh, faith is complicated and, and the way the world works is complicated. The way nature works is complicated. Uh, how we are going to get through this is complicated and, um, there aren't right answers and there's things going on that none of us understand. No one, not at the highest level of government, no one at the lowest level of unemployment, no one can a hundred percent predict how this is go going to go. And what are the things that are going to help us overcome this pandemic? Um, and so the more we can go on faith, the more we can trust our instincts, um, a better chance that we can get to where we're wanting to go the quickest. Uh, you know, I always say that when you tr like not trusting people, it just means it takes longer to see their real character. If you go and you put your trust on the line with someone, you might get burned, but you're going to get burned a lot quicker than you would if you were playing games and 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 trying to protect yourself. Um, you know, the, it's also my argument for why I think our government should trust us. Our government does not trust us. Um, and, you know, there's serious talk about like a national lockdown and, and, uh, troops in the street. And, and I, I don't want that. I want people to stay in their homes and I want it to be serious that people should stay in their homes at this time. Um, but there, there are steps in between martial law and not saying anything to anyone. You know, there's people out on the streets just walking in neighborhoods here in Chicago. You know, we've gone for a couple drives and we see there's a lot of people out. Um, and, you know, they're somewhat keeping their distance. But it's still people out means the, the disease will probably spread. And again, I can't judge them because hopefully they're going on their instincts and their faith if they're living within their instincts, which a lot of people don't, but um, if you are living with your instincts, you know, anyway, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna trust you to making the right decisions, but that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be signs ever saying, if you don't need to be out, go home, that there shouldn't be police posted saying, you know, in their cars and the loudspeaker saying, please, if you're not out for an essential reason, go home. Um, I think that's an important step to take before we talk about more extreme measures for keeping people in their homes uh, in this country, America, the land of the free, supposedly. Uh, you know, 
I, I, there are intermediate, intermediary steps. And, you know, for instance, when I came in the airport, I was pretty shocked that no one said to us, please go home and quarantine for 14 days. Everyone on that plane should have gone home and quarantined for 14 days as we are doing, um, the best that we can. Um, and, uh, yeah. See, making those statements is a, it's it's a value of trust in our citizens saying, please go and do this. But you have to tell them, you have to ask them, and you have to say it again and again. You can't just say it on the news or put up some billboards and expect that to be enough. You have to actually ask people. You have to ask people to do what is right for people. Um, well, anyway, I'm on a tangent here, but, you know, to go back to the faith thing, the best we can do is follow our instincts. So when I first started, tried to look for my instincts in my body, um, you know, I can't remember if it was through vortex healing or if it was something I'd read previously, I think maybe both, that basically says in your body there is a response. You can get a yes or no answer out of your body. So I started to ask myself a lot of yes or no answers. And actually, I did this a lot playing games. Should I do this? Should I play this card? Should I play this card? And for me, I get a yes answer. I don't get a no answer. So that means that if I say to myself, should I play this card? And I get no answer. I need to turn it in the firm, uh, inverse. I need to inverse the question. So instead of saying, should I play this card? I say, should I not play that card? And if th then if I get a strong yes in that case, that means no, I shouldn't play the card, right? Because I only I mostly just get yes answers. Uh, I get a strong affirmative yes. And my strong affirmative yes always came as an eye blink. When I am saying, like, should I make this video right now? I get this eye blink, right? My eye, this eye particularly, sometimes if it's a really strong answer, this eye will go to. Um, now I've been doing this long enough that I don't always have to go to the level of the eye blank to get sort of my answer. But, uh, if, if it's something I'm really struggling over, I do look for that eye blink. It's sort of my backup answer. Um, now this isn't a foolproof thing. It's a hard thing and something I've been working with for years, this instinctual thing. Um, and for me, instincts is the same as God. And if you don't like the word God, then let's say instincts is the same as the essence that runs through everything, right? The light and love and energy that connects us all, that tells plants how to bloom, that tells human bodies how to make babies. There is a connective thread, you know, if you're someone like me, believe there's a connective thread through everything and your instincts are part of that connective thread. Um, so, you know, I, I really encourage you to play with this idea of, of asking yourself yes or no answers and feeling the answer in your body. So it took me a little time to develop, but over time, now I feel really short. If, if I get a yes answer, I know it's a yes answer. Now, sometimes I still have to play with it because I will midway asking myself the question will switch the question because... I'm so anxious about it. I can't stick with it. Sticking with your questions is really important. Being calm is really important. That's another thing that I found has told me a big difference between what, when I'm in my fear and when I'm in sort of a loving place where I can follow my instincts. When you're fearful, it's very difficult to follow your instincts. Now, when we're fearful, that's a time we need to follow our instincts. So it's uh, kind of counterintuitive there. Um, but... Uh, when you're following your instincts, when you're, when you're listening to an answer that is the essence of things, when you get that answer, uh, and, and you know, it's not fear-based, the way to know it's not fear-based is to have calm in that answer, to be stuck on that answer. Fear is, fear is often, it jumps around, right? When you're fearful, it's hard to stay in one place. It's hard to stick with one answer. So, uh, or one question. So, right, if I'm asking, should I go out today? Oh, maybe I should go out. Maybe I shouldn't go. Oh, oh wait, what should I? Yeah, I definitely shouldn't go out. If you're doing this, you're, you're, first of all, you're in the fear. So it's hard to get your instincts going. But second of all, you're not sticking with one question long enough and, um, to really get a solid answer. Uh, and I, I still struggle with this. I've been doing this for 
seven years maybe, um, where I first sort of found this, oh wow, I can get an answer out of my eye. Um, and there are still times when I struggle, when I don't know what to do, uh, including when I was in India trying to come home. All my instincts were telling me, find an apartment there, find an apartment there. And you know what? At some point, my instincts changed and said, nope, it's time to go home. Um, now, you know, I could look at it and be like, my instincts were totally off. I should not have found an apartment. That was not the right thing to do. But because I have a lot of faith in myself and faith in my instincts and faith in God, because I have this faith, I, I can see well, and, and a lot of times we can't see, right? I, we can't, I can't see all of the impacts of the time I was in India, whether it was right or wrong for me to go right. I, I can't see all the impacts. Um, I know some of the impacts that I had that were negative and some that were positive, but I have to have faith that overall my impact was more positive than negative because I have faith that most things overall have positive impacts versus negative impacts. Even the worst, most negative things have positive things coming out of them. Um, so if something is mostly positive, you have to think a lot of positive things are going to come out of it. Um, and, and overall it's, it's going to equal out to, to move towards the positive. Um, so yeah, so the thing is, if I hadn't looked so hard for an apartment, I wouldn't have had the signal that things were really shifting in India and that uh, it was not so safe to be there as a foreigner. And I definitely have seen on Facebook people who are still in India trying to get out that this sentiment is uh, that I've, you know, happened to reap through pushing to find an apartment that the, that foreigners were not being looked kindly on is true um that that has continued to be an issue in india currently um so so yeah instincts are weird they may take you weird places you may do weird things but i i do urge you to live by them um since i live by my instincts i can't say i haven't made mistakes i do but i'm certainly not always in my instincts and when i am the benefit of being in your instincts the benefit of having faith the benefit of being connected to this essence of life is that you can be more calm you can understand that you're not going to understand why things are happening but that they have a good reason um that 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 you're doing what you're meant to be doing when you stay in the moment you can have a lot more faith that you're doing what you're meant to be doing. All right. So I'm going to leave this little faith-based talk. I'm going to leave with a little... Let's do a little grounding. Hmm. Yeah, grounding is always good. So let's, let's try to leave all that extra stuck, worried energy. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to be. Let's let's just leave that all here. Give it to the earth. The earth can take that strife, that energy, those electrons, whatever it needs, it can take. Whatever we need to get rid of, it can take. All right, love and peace. Have a good day.